audio jungle. So I promised you tricks uh, to test for divisibility and in this video we've got big idea three. We're going to look at what I call the final digit divisibility tricks. I've got a ton of tricks but these are the easiest so we're going to look at this first. Okay, Final digit divisibility tricks are going to look um, they're going to be able to tell if 2, 5, and 10 are divisible. I'm going to try to say that again. This time I'm going to say it in English. We're going to use final digit divisibility tricks to look for factors of 2, 5, or 10. So in order to be able to tell you the trick, I really want to go through the two times tables and see if we can find the pattern for ourselves. So let's do that. So first number is 2. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm just going to go for a while really fast because I've done this once or twice before. Pretty familiar. 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. And I could go on and on forever. I promise you I really could. But I won't because y'all did nothing to deserve that. But I call these the final digit divisibility tricks for a reason. We're going to see everything we need to see about the two times tables by examining the final digit, what I call the butt of the number. So if you take a look, these are just one digit numbers. But starting here, just looking at the final digit, what we see here is this pattern over and over again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. And it's going to go on like that until the end of time. And so basically what we learn here is that if a number is divisible by 2, it is even. Or I can flip it around and say if a number is even, it is divisible by 2. Same thing. And again, if we forget what an even number means, then we learn that it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So this is a pretty easy and obvious trick. I think a lot of people notice this without even necessarily realizing what they're noticing. So let's do a few simple problems that go along with this concept. Remember, I can ask you about divisibility in different ways. I could ask you, is 605 divisible by 2? And to answer this question, I'm too lazy to divide. So I'm going to use my trick. Mathematicians are just about the laziest people on earth. We always use a trick if we can. So my trick is to just examine the final digit. And I said if a number is divisible by 2, we're going to see an even number back here. This is odd. Therefore, my answer to this question is no. 605 is definitely not divisible by 2. The next two problems are going to be just as simple. I just want to see how I can change the language on you uh, to try to trick you. I don't want you to be tricked. I could ask is 2 a factor of 8,431, I'm asking the same thing. If it's a factor, it divides perfectly. So examining this number, I just look at its butt. There's a 1. That's an odd number. My answer is no. I'm looking for evens. Okay, finally, I have this. Is 6,350 a multiple of 2? Again, just asking you the same question. Come back here right to the butt of this larger number. That's a 0. And you may remember, this is the one that tricks a lot of people, but 0 is an even number. Signals an even number. And therefore, this number is definitely a multiple of 2. Excellent. And that's it for the 2's trick. If you're the type who likes to practice what you learned right away, you can go ahead and pause this video and go to Quizlet and try set 1.4c and I have the divisibility tricks just for twos. For the rest of you, let's move on to fives. 
So let's keep going on with the final digit divisibility tricks. So we looked at twos, now let's look at fives. Again, let's list out our five times tables so we can find the pattern on our own. Math is really just a quest for patterns. We're looking at how things always behave. So let's look at our five times tables. Bet a lot of you know these by heart. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, the reason why you know these so well is because five is such a well-behaved and predictable little number. In fact, I bet a lot of you can go straight past five times 10 is 50 and keep going indefinitely. 55, 60, 65, 70. He's just so predictable. And why is he so predictable? Well, again, the answer is in the final digit of these numbers. We take a look at the but of everything on the five times tables, and all we see are zeros and five over and over again, zeros and fives. And so we can come up with the rule for divisibility by fives. Our trick, our rule for fives will be if a number ends in zero or five, it is divisible. Divisible, I can spell. It is divisible by five. Very nice, so easy rule and easy to apply. Let's take a look at some of these problems. Here's one you might see is 675 divisible by five. Again, I'm gonna go straight to this number's back side and look just at that final digit five. And I had said if a number ends in zero or five, it's divisible by five, and there we go. There's a five right there, and so my answer is yes. Beautiful. Take a look at another example. Again, I can change words around on you. They ask, is five a factor of 2007? And again, if it's a factor, it divides it perfectly. So I'm going to come to this number. I'm going to look straight at its final digit. Final digit is seven. That's not a zero or a five. And therefore, the answer to this is no. Five is not a factor. Finally, for some reason, people find this kind of number a little tricky. Is 550 a multiple of 5? We look at his back side, we see a 0. That sure is a 0 or a 5. And so my answer is yes. Pretty simple rule. I bet you like it as much as I do. As long as we're on the subjects of five, I want to give you guys another little check your work like a math teacher tip. A lot of times people will give me wrong answers when they do their five times tables. For example, this one happens to me almost every day. Somebody will tell me that five times eight is equal to 45. And right when I see that, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. I know it must be wrong. And let me tell you why why this doesn't work for the math teacher. There's a little pattern we noticed that you may not have noticed. Let me show it to you. In order to do it, let's write back out our five times tables. Okay, so five times one is five, as you all know, and five times two is 10. Five times three is 15, I promise. I'm wasting your time alternating colors for a reason. Five times four is 20. Five times five is 25. Five times six is 30. Five times seven is 35. Five times eight is 40. And we have 45 and finally 50. Why did I take the time to do this in all these pretty colors? Here's what I want you to notice. All my five times tables that were being multiplied by an odd number, I wrote in blue. One is an odd number, as is three, five, seven, 
and 9. And here's what I notice. Every time I multiply 5 by an odd number, I get something that ends in 5. 5, 15, 25. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 9 is 45. So the basic principle is here is when I multiply 5 by an odd, I get an odd number. I get something that ends in a 5. Now, conversely, when I multiply by an even number, what do we see happening? 5 times 2 gives me 10, which ends in a 0. And when we multiply it by 4, we get 20, which also ends in a 0, as do 30, 40, and 50, which makes a lot of sense because 6, 8, and 10 are even numbers. So, this makes sense, so let's write down our rule in case I went a little too fast. Come on over here with me, and I'll say when you multiply 5 by an even number, the answer ends in 0. You know, if I was thinking right, I should have done my this one in blue. I'm going to change it. How about when you multiply 5 by an odd number, the answer ends in zero in 5. There we go. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And now we'll write about the evens. When you multiply 5 by an even number, the answer ends in 0 which makes sense because we learned earlier that zero was even. Awesome, hope you don't mix up your fives anymore. So you know what time it is, it's time to practice your fives. Go ahead and pause this video, go on to Quizlet in Kate's GED math class, and if you go to set 1.4D, it is entitled Divisibility Tricks for Fives, and you'll be able to practice what we just learned and then we'll start back up again with 10. So come back when you're ready. So the next divisibility trick I want to talk about is for the tens. So again, we're talking final digit divisibility. So we're going to be looking at the back side of the 10 times tables. But before I write out the 10 times tables, I actually want to take a second to talk to you about what 10 is made of. What you're made of affects how you're going to behave in math. So some of you all might know that 2 times 5 equals 10. So when I talk about what 10 is made of, I'm talking about its two factors that we learned, 2 and 5. We know divisibility tricks for both of these numbers already. We know that if a number divides by 2, it's even meaning that it'll end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. It will end in one of those numbers. And then we learned shortly after that that if a number is divisible by 5, it will end in 0 or 5. And what uh, number do these two lists have in common? Notice the only number that they have in common is the number 0. Look at that. And y'all probably have noticed a long time ago our 10 times tables are easy, easy as can be, because they all seem to end in 0. Take a look. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Doesn't really matter how high you go. I could keep going until the end of time. I'm going to find that my 10 times tables always, always, always add in, end in zero, sorry. And that's no surprise to us because we looked at what 10 was made of. So that leads us to our trick. There's our divisibility rule for 10. If it ends in zero, it's divisible by 10. 10 is a factor. Great, good rule. So let's apply it. Let's come over here to some GED type problems. And I see, is 60,007 divisible by 10? I look straight at the butt of the problem. This is a final digit trick. 
and I see that's not a zero. Doesn't matter how many zeros are in between. I'm just trying to fool you guys. The back side isn't a zero, and so the answer is no. Take a look here. Is 10 a factor of 630? Same basic idea. Take a look at this. 630 sure does end in a zero. Yay. And so the answer is yes. Beautiful. Here's one that really fools a lot of people. I, I put this here on purpose. Is 835 a multiple of 10? And a lot of times our brains want to tell us yes because we're thinking of the five trick, but be really careful. The trick for tens, only things that end in a zero are divisible by 10, and that is not a zero. And so the answer is no. It might be a multiple of five, but it sure isn't a multiple of 10. Now it's time for you to practice. First of all, go ahead and practice your tens. I've got a set where it's just the tens, in again my Kate's GED math class on Quizlet, you can go to 1.4e and that's the divisibility tricks for tens. Once you feel really good with that, um, again you can probably just do that one in learn mode. All the divisibility tricks will be great using learn mode. Now go ahead and mix it up. A lot of times things will make sense to us when we're doing it alone, but then things get a little trickier when we start to mix up the problems. So, once you feel good at the tens, try set 1.4f, which has all the final digit tricks combined. The twos, the fives, and the tens. Once you feel really comfortable with that, and you have that straight, join me for the next video and we'll look at other divisibility tricks.